coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Big Sex and Dead, we got Bacon Pound with us, you know, if you guys don't know, check them out on YouTube. 33 years. 33 of them things, man. Shout out to everybody out there on TBP. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. We're on the go to 100K, then on to 1 million. And much more. Absolutely. So we're going to ask a few questions. want to know what was it like when you met your first cellmate? Did you guys talk, not talk? Was it like a standoff? First cellmate in jail or prison? Prison? Prison. prison. Oh, hmm, good question. Good question. First cellmate in prison. Oh, yeah. My first cellmate in prison was in the season. Um, he did so. He was he was a white guy. He was nervous, nervous. You know, I mean, you first going to prison, everybody nervous, nervous. But he was way more nervous than me. Was he a small dude? Yeah, he was small. And he had good reason to be. They were down on, you know, trying to extort him, do this, do that. But I'm just getting in there. So, you know, first rule you learn in prison is mind your business. So, I ain't had nothing to do with it. As long as they didn't come running up in that cell, I was good. That thing happened to him outside that said that was on him, like, because I ain't know him. But, um, yeah, he was nervous. That was my first sentence. So, by him being a white guy and him being way more nervous than me, it made me even more confident and more, you know, you know, uh, uh, up on game about what was going on. But I, I, I was good, though, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you guys got along. You ever had yeah, to, like, yeah. come Captain Save him? Uh, I did. I did. You know what I'm saying? I did, right? And, and like I say, it was because of the sale. They was pressing him and they was acting like they was going to come in the sale to do something to him. And I, I just let it be known, you, you ain't coming up in here. I don't care what you do outside the sale, but you can't come up in here. So, you know what I'm saying? They respected that, which was um, beneficial to them because I was, I was already in that mode. Like, whatever it is, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, but... Um, he, he was good. He, he was good while I was there, but then I ended up, you know, leaving. So, I don't know why I'm talking about that now. You didn't get to teach him no fight moves? Nah, I ain't get a chance to do that. I don't think he, I don't think he was, uh, I don't think he was ready for that anyway. He was more into, uh, you know, uh, man, I just want to get out here. I don't want no trouble, but that don't work in the sense of, but that, that's the type of frame of mind he was in. I'm in the frame of mind. I'm trying to learn about what's going on, because this is going to be my world for a minute. And I ain't had time to be babysitting. Okay, okay. How long did it take for you guys to initiate the first conversation? Though? Oh, you gonna talk when you first go in there. That's all. Yeah, because you gotta know what's going on. You gotta check the temperature. What we call it. I gotta check his temperature. I gotta see where he coming from. What type of time he on. You know what I'm saying? What his mind frame is. I, I got to do that. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as you walk in the cell, a new cell. If it's somebody already in there, the first thing you do is say, I mean, what's up, man? My man says, 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 woo, woo, woo. And then you take the conversation from there, how he go, what he say. If he feel like he's talking to you and want to talk more, you talk more. If you just initiate, you know, the dap up and say who you are, he don't want to talk no more, just keep it pushing. This man, your business. Yeah. I've been in sale with dudes I ain't talked to. I've been in sale with dudes for a year. I probably had less than, in a whole year, I probably had less than a 10 minute conversation with him. I'm talking about for the entire year. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, be like that. All right. What was your first job in prison? First job in prison was about. First job I got was about. Only job I had in 33 years in prison, I only, I only have been a barber, a houseman, and a recreational man. I never had any other job. Even the only three jobs I had in prison. I won't work in nobody's kitchen. I won't work in nobody's yard. I won't work in nobody, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, a chain gang. Mm. I won't do none of that. I don't care what they paid or whatever. I just won't do them. You know, I, 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 I do the cutting hair because I had a license in barbering, so that won't nothing. And, you know, it's all right. After a while, I get annoying. It's, it's I don't know what. I do the houseman job when you can't really get a job. Because all the barber jobs are taken, so you take the houseman job just so you can be out and about, move around, make some moves, you know, make some shape. And um, wreck, so you can go down there and get wrecked. You know, you can work out, I can go down there, I can hit the bag, 
I can be in there when ain't nobody in there, you know. So, them the only three jobs I ever had the whole time I was out there. Mm -hmm. So you cut all types of hair? Oh, yeah, I done cut everybody's hair, man. Big dudes, fat dudes, Puerto Rican dudes, white dudes, Spanish dudes, Chinese dudes, dirty dudes, funky dudes, stinky dudes. I done cut them all. They don't like restrict them from getting haircuts and stuff that you see. No, nah, man, they'll go get dudes and, um, like in SEG. I used to be a SEG barber a couple of different times. And you might got a dude in SEG, he might be, um, uh, what's the word to call it? He just don't want to shower, he don't want to do nothing. So after a certain amount of time, and he get the smelling so bad, and he got like all his trays, he won't throw them out, he keep all his trays in the cell or whatever. So the COs, after a certain amount of time, they'll come around, they'll make him take a shower, they go in the cell, clean the cell out, and they'll handcuff him and shackle him and bring him down there and come get me the bottle and say, cut his hair, whether he want to cut him. Not, I ain't never so liked thrash, that. he thrash, he thrash, oh, yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah, times yeah. they be thrashing the chair. What they call it in prison, they call it a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, hey, man, I forget They put him in a boss chair? They no, they put them in the red set, but they had a couple of shots and they got two polices right there to watch them. But um, man, I forgot the name. What they call it, man? But when they wolf him. <laughs> yeah, he be wolf him. He got hell everywhere. You know, Joe Maddie there. Castaways. Yeah, yeah, Wilson. yeah, yeah. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of that like they be wolfing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and as I'm rounding them up, I see the dirt separated from their skin and their head. They call that manes. They be dirty. I did all that, man. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never really liked it because, like I say, they in the chair, the CO telling me, cut his hair. He said, man, don't cut my hair. So it always put me at a, at a you know what I'm saying, at a, yeah, at was, yeah, <clears throat> So I, But I used to always ask him straight up. Hey, look, Joe, dude tell me cut your hair, man. I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know, what you going to do? And then they put so much pressure on him, he used to submit. But if he ever say no, I think I only had like two dudes say no. Nah. And they was like, man, cut his hair. We tell you cut his hair, this your job. I said, man, I'm not cutting the dude's hair. He said, I'm going to cut his hair. And one, one joint, they just sent me back. The other joint, I got fired because I wouldn't cut his hair. I ain't cutting, I ain't cutting the joke hair if he said I'm going to cut his hair. I'm, I'm not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, because after you done doing your job, yeah, you don't know, you know what's that time they yeah, going to get mad. They ain't got no hair saying. to cold. Yeah, so I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't do it right, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I I got fired one time, I got sent back and put on suspension the other time. But I ain't gonna cut it, do it if he said just don't cut it. Man. And then, you know, they came up with the um, grooming inspection too, where dudes can't have beards a certain length, hair a certain length. So they see a dude woofing with the beard or he got too much hair on his face, they go get him and bring him out there, they get me out there, they say, man, cut his beard down to such and such, or one eighth or whatever, whatever. And these be like, man, don't cut it, man. You just, you know, act like you're cutting them like, you know what I'm saying? So it was always an awkward position that they put me in, man, you know what I'm saying? But that's what penitentiary is, it's, it's, it's awkward. Mm -hmm. How many hairs, like, heads did you cut a day? Man, I think the most I cut in one day was probably, Maybe like 60, 62, 62 heads in a day. So they'll wake you up before um, counting around when like the, the food crew gets up? No, once they, yeah, once they finish counting and breakfast and all of that, I could set my own schedule, but it's like, it's 82 dudes in the block. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for cutting all of their hair. So what I do is I separate it. I say, today I'm doing the bottom tier. If you're on the bottom tier and you want a haircut, I'll cut your head. If you're on the top tier, I'm doing you tomorrow. If you're on the top tier the next day, I will, I'll cut your hair. Whoever come there and they want their hair cut, I'll cut their hair. So I do it like that, and then I switch. Top tier, bottom tier, top tier, bottom tier. I switch like that. On the weekends, I say, I ain't cut nobody hair on my own. I might get busy with the group. So, you know, you can basically set your own schedule as long as you, you know, you know, you was efficient and you got the job done, which I did. So it, it, it always worked out for me. But all they, all they did was give me a position. Once they give me a position, I take over the position. They say, do it this way. I say, okay, boom, I agree to it. Then I do it my way. The best way to work out for me. Okay. You know With the ball people, sorry, ball people, the chat. For the ball people, would you have to, like, use the razor blade or do you wax yeah. your head just like No, I ain't doing no waxing or none of that. When I, um, when the 
the ball people coming out on chill and they just want to ball it. I, I, I literally put them last in the list if they get done at all because I'd be like, man, they got too much stuff to do, man. They ain't yeah, sitting there shaving your head. Go buy you some clippers out the car and say, man, do something, man. I ain't shaving your head. Do some race. Man, I, I deserve a haircut too. Wow, wow. Well, okay, man, you get it from somewhere else. So I used to have dudes used to go, you know, they won't, in my experience, they won't man up to tell me, but they go, oh, your barber don't be cutting nobody's hair. He got picks, he only cut his own boy's hair, all that foolishness. But like I say, nine times out of ten, whatever building I was in, the lieutenants and everybody, they rock with me, so they would be like, man, you know, we ain't, we ain't find him. He, you know, he the best barber we got. So, you know, but you had them type of dudes that would do that, but. I'm not sitting there finna cut you a bald head and you a grown man and you can't take care of your own bald head. Now I can understand you're a grown man, you can't cut your own hair, line your own hair up and all that. Man, you can man, it don't take nothing to bow your head. I'm not balling your head, dog. Only way I'm gonna bow your head if, if, if all my haircuts is done, ain't nobody else trying to get no haircut and you wanna bow head. Other than that, I'm not I'm not I'm not balling your head, dog. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. You got like two more questions. This is kinda like serious. That's something I'm curious about. So, as a barber, I've been wanting to ask this, but my uncle never takes me serious. When shaving the head, say for me someone with a big, ooh, they got a big head or whatever, and they got that head fold, you know what I'm talking about, the scalp fold, how do you go about cutting that? Do you just, <laughs> I, 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 I know. Hold it? Like, no, 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 no Right, so what we do is, what you do is this. Say these are the rolls, you talking about mm -hmm. the like that, yeah. right? So what you do is, right, you take the clippers, and you gotta raise, you gotta take the skin and raise it up, and you gotta go up in, in that joint, oh. man. You gotta... <laughs> so you wanna ball you get that fold. Yeah you, gotta get, yeah, you gotta get up in that joint. But you want me to tell you my worst joint, though? Hmm. Not even the main thing, my worst joint. When them dudes got them um Popcorn bumps in the back, man. I be scared of them. They never popped on you. Yeah, they ain't popped on me. They getting up out of there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they getting up out of there, but man, them jokes, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't like messing with them jokes, man, because it's like, I don't want to take the clippers cross up because of what you say. I don't mm -hmm. want to do the bus. They be saying the joke don't hurt, man. It look like it hurt. Yeah, so man. I don't be want to go over it. You know, I go around it. You know, it had hair all in the middle. So I, that's the. That's my worst joke. I ain't like them jokes. And then them, them jokes that come there and got the, 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 the crazy, crazy hairlines, the hairline all the way down in their forehead. Mm. They ain't got, and they want you to That's make a line. And then you got the dudes that want the, um, they want the, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? They, they, oh man, don't push my line back. Man, you don't even got a line. And then you got dudes that you know, they got a line. Yeah, you got you got jokers that got bald head, man. You bald, dog. And you tell them I'll make you a line. How can I make up? Uh, and then they this is literally a saying. They say, uh, man, go ahead and hit the invisible line for me. If it's invisible, if it's invisible, how I'm gonna see it? You had Beijing? You nah, we ain't got none of that, none of that. They just want me to hit their literally hit their scalp. And just try to act like you got a line. They call that's called an invisible line, right? Pass. They man, pass. that don't used to be crazy, man. That, that don't used to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you know that barber joke, man. That that joke wasn't a gift and a curse, man. Because it was the highest paying job in prison. You ain't gonna get no job in prison unless you work for Enterprise. Enterprise is the dudes that come in. A, a, a whole different entity comes into prison. The high dudes like to make um, shells and tables and all that stuff mm -hmm. for colleges and all that that's enterprise they gonna get like a dollar thirty something cent an hour other than that the top paying job on there is what they call qualified job you gotta have a license which was a bob i get 45 cent an hour yeah 45 whole cent an hour so yeah yeah so that's big money you know what i'm saying I'm, yeah i'm bringing in straight 60 dollars a month you did you understand me so yeah so, but other than that, man, you know, um, you know, it, it was a gift and a curse because you know you charge dudes too. They want to fade, they want a high top, they want, you know, temper taper, they want all that. The state say, all I got to give you is a ball day. I don't even have to give you a round up. So anything extra was, you know, you got to pay. Them, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's it.
Originally, had people walking around with balls. Oh, yeah, that's all I got to do. All I got to do for state for white dudes, Puerto Rican, Chinese, black, whatever, all I, my job requirement is put the guard on for whatever you want, zoop, 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 next man. That's my job description. So anything you get bonus, I ain't trying to hurt no whole lot of, you know what I'm saying, because if I do it and don't charge you, I ain't trying to hurt nothing. But, you know, all that fade and all that temper taper and all that hat top and all that, you know, all that junk, what you got? Okay, sit down. And I got you. Because they can't, yeah, get rid of the All that, if you, want, if, you want, if you want a fade and you want me to hit your face, if you want me to line up your beard, your mustache, up under your neck, all that, yeah, you got, you know what I'm saying, you got to break me off. You know what I'm saying? And um, I got you because, uh, yeah, I'm surgical with that thing. That's good though. You made forty five cents an hour. The other guys, enterprise. So they're not like they're not in prison. They're like from a different. No, no, no. They're in prison. They just the, the, the enterprise that come in is not a part of the administration. They a whole entity, like they're a subsidiary company. They might be in there, and they yeah, like you got the wood shop. You got the tailor shop, you got um, things like that. So the wood shop is, they make desks, tables, chairs, counters, all that, and they sell them to prisons. I mean, they sell them to colleges like BCU or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They sell them to colleges. They all, if you go into college and you see all them big tape, they make them. Then you got the power tan, they got the tag shop. And you your, um, uh, what, what is it called? Fun fact. There is not a license plate made in Virginia that you have seen or I have seen it was not made at Powhatan. They are all made at Powhatan. For slave wages. How much was they paying them? Uh, no more than a dollar and something cent hour. And them dudes go to work before we come out for breakfast which made we come out for breakfast at six, six thirty. Them dudes be at work by six o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning and them dudes come back at six in the evening. They give a dollar and some cent an hour. You know, yeah. They make every license plate, even your designer license plate. If you want to know your license plate, big sexy, that was made in Powhatan. Somebody at Powhatan made that. I probably know the dude who made that. Any license plate made in Virginia is made at Powhatan. And see, so you tell me what is the difference between that and what they say. They got these sweatshops over here in China that's making Nike and making this and they ain't paying them. That's what they're doing right here. Prisoners in Virginia make every license place in Virginia before I went to prison and, and when I left prison. And I was in prison for 33 years. So you tell me what that's called. If that's a sweatshop or whatever they call it over there, what do you call this? That's what they do. They got, they got a tag shop. They make all the tags. In Virginia, you got the uh, tailor shop. They make the, all the t-shirts and all the underwear that all this um, inmates wear. Which, if you've been in prison for over ten years, you probably wore somebody else's drawers. If you're in there now, you probably had on some drawers that I had on. <laughs> true story. Um, if you can't afford your own, <laughs> yeah, true story. <laughs> true story. You ain't get no brand new drawers all the time. Um, you got tan shop. You got tailor shop. You got the. Um, Shoe shop, they make all the uh Rogan boots that you know what I'm saying, state boots and stuff that dudes wear in prison. At one point in time, you had the um slaughterhouse, which they had a farm on the state farm where they you know all of the meat and everything that we ate in prison came from from from, from that um that farm, and they probably sold meat to you know uh, McDonald's yeah. parties and they all the local jumps. So, yeah, prison ain't nothing but um, you know. Um, modern day slavery, man. It's neo slavery. It's the new slavery. Prison is the new slavery. That's that's what's going on in there, man. But a lot of people don't know. A lot of people ain't hip. A lot of people don't want to believe. But I'm telling you, actually, factually, I've lived this life. I know that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But um, yeah. Dudes make every license plate. When I first found that out, I was like, "Which you, you work at tag shop? What y'all do over there? Oh, we make all the license plates for Virginia. All the license plates. Yeah." You got a customized license plate, and you got a regular license plate. If you got a Virginia license plate on your car, it was made in prison at Powhatan. 
free to die, some deserve to at least give us some five dollars, ten dollars. They ain't getting no, they ain't getting nothing. They gonna, they gonna fire you. Because that's not even enough to pay for like nothing. Um, commissary. Yeah. Like, any mm-hmm. hygienic products, any medication, medical yeah. bills, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, you can, you, you can, you know what I'm saying, have a good state check. From working in the, you know, tag shop or something like that, you probably, you probably eat for about a good month. You know what I'm saying? But that's all they live in. It's like people out here in poverty, you live in month to month. You know what I'm saying? You live in month to month. You know what I'm saying? So you just working to eat and working to survive. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's the highest paid job in all of Virginia State prisons is an enterprise job. If you don't have an enterprise job, meaning tag shop, leather shop, you know, uh, 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 tailor shop. Or if you ain't got that, the highest paid job was what I had, meaning a licensed job. A barber, or uh, what else I had, an uh, electrician, you know, where you work on a uh, maintenance crew or plumbing, you work on maintenance. Other than that, you ain't getting 45 cents an hour. And then it dropped from 45 cents to like a dollar something. I'm not sure, like 120, 135 or something like that. But that's it. Ain't there a joker in there making over two dollars an hour? Nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. The regular people make 27 cents. Yeah, so their check every month be like $28 or $31, $32. It's a four week pay period, you might make 28. If it's a five week pay period, you might make 34 $35 per month. Woo-hoo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They straight raping news in there, man. You know, living it, you know. But you know, like I said, I always say it, it, it's um, it's legal extortion, man. You know what I'm saying? But you in survival mode, and you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do what you gotta do. I, Cause I'd cut a many jokes here that I ain't wanna cut. <laughs> I'd cut a many of them that I ain't wanna cut, and had to put hands on a few of them because they want a haircut and won't get in there. So it is what it is. They got money right. Yeah, yeah, you got that your money right. They already know. You pay you, you get a haircut for me and you owe me and you don't pay me yet. You know, it's all good. Pay it to St. Peter. You know? <laughs> pay it to St. Peter. Yeah. You collect all that. Right. <laughs> Y'all heard it. I'm from yeah. Baby Pound, so big six days. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna let him close out for us. Yeah, uh, this Baggy Pam, man, 33 Years of Prison Stories, man. Y'all go check me out on YouTube, 33 Years of Prison Stories, man. Follow me on Instagram, IG, man. We live every morning with the morning mud, man, where we start the day off with positive energy. We accept positive energy. Only feed the positive, stop the negative. Uh, we also got uh, Baggy Pam Prison Fitness, man, where we get ready to start posting more on that platform where we're going to show you how to get it prison fit. Uh, we got Banky Pam Pure Deliciousness where we whip up all of that good food. Uh, we got me on TikTok, man, Banky Pam, and I'm getting ready to get on Twitch. You understand me? So uh, y'all stay tuned, man. We out here. We doing what we can do. We trying to uh, change the narrative, man, to save some lives, man. So uh, y'all come on, tap in with me, man. Salute. We out here. Be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man, and duck all them hooks. Don't be having no bumpy heads when you go to the barbershop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be having no, no none of the money. Make sure you have it. <laughs> if you guys want to watch some interesting interviews, we got DJ Vlad and the No Jumper interview with Baby Pound. So you guys check that out. Big hey, Sexy Dads. Big Sexy Dads, man. Y'all go follow her. Y'all check her out on Twitch. Y'all check her out on all platforms, man. She be spitting that fire. She family. So y'all go check that out. And also... Check out interviews. If y'all want to watch interviews and find out what's going on with me, man, you watch the Vlad TV interview, you watch the No Jumper interview, and you watch my homeboy interview, man, on, on Kurt Bone TV from D.C., a D.C. legend. You know what I'm saying? I did plenty of interviews with those, the, the ones that come off the top of my head. Y'all go check them out if you like what you're hearing, if you like what we got going on, because like I got to tell everybody, man, this is a movement, not a moment. If you like what's going on, man, and you're trying to change the narrative of what's going on out here in these streets with these young people, man, come over there, man, follow, subscribe, share, you know, tell a friend and tell a friend and tell somebody he knew that might know somebody who might want some of this energy that we got over here. But we out here every day, man, and we post on uh, 33 years of prison stories, man, seven days a week, man, so tap in with me, man. Yeah.
Are you guys? I'm a school teacher, so that's the same situation. Yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, yeah. Duck them hooks, man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I let everybody know. Y'all going around bringing these little knives and cells and everything with with each other, um, running everybody's stuff. But I I had to let everybody know. You coming in this, you gonna have to use that joint. Like you really gonna have to cut me. I'm not giving up my food. You know what I'm saying? Ever since then, I swear to God, nobody never tried to run it myself. But I had to let it know because I felt like it was coming around. So oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, I let everybody know that. <laughs> but people in prison don't fight. Yeah. 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 Tells the gazelle, the deer, the whoever, I'm getting ready to jump out and get you. No, you <laughs> make a move, and that's yeah. that. Ain't no war, ain't no rules in war, man. You survive, yeah. man. Either you bite or be bitten. Yeah. And that's it. Ain't no, oh, he snuck up in prison. Oh, he snuck up on now. You know yeah. it was a bitch. You should have been ready. Yeah, you know it. Don't like Yeah, you should have been ready. I can't do jail, bro. Yeah, it ain't for That should give me flash <laughs> back, right? It's not for human consumption. Yeah. <laughs>